Is there a way to no, I forget like how oh maybe it's this. Yeah, because I'm gonna share my screen during my part. Yeah, so we need another one more. Well, hopefully somebody will come for was there any reasoning given for the reservations? Well, for Carolyn's, her mom is saying work. So she says she's going Oh, okay. oh, here's Doug. Good. Thank you, Doug. Well, uh, <laughs> 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 I never responded to her. I never replied to her. Ellie, you may need to jump up with George. No, he can stay with it. Oh, no, just. Allow him as part of this case if he shows up. We'll let you know. Okay. It depends. You have to like register for a training and you're going to jump on. So, all right, well, we'll get started since we have a quorum. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I guess the first order of business would be the review of the minutes if there's any edits. I just got some grammatical stuff. Yeah. I don't know if that'll matter. I know. Thanks for, thanks hey, for, I was doing this. Thanks for writing those. Yeah, very fantastic. Uh, one comment on that is hopefully. Yeah. Oh, if they can give me can a file. Can somebody like, record it on the phone? Oh, I have that thought too. Because I yeah. doubt that can oh, work for me. So I'll record it and then that should be. That can go in the text for so that'll save and put it out. Yeah. Okay, everybody's got to speak up today's meeting. Let's see how this goes. So it's going the, the recording off of this thing doesn't work out. Oh, it does, but you didn't take any physical notes. You know, write anything down. You have to listen, right? You know, I mean, if I guess if I was doing it on two different computers, it would be all right. And if I was there to play for yeah. but, and you can't download the file of the recording, which means that you got to play back. Which the playback, like my tools, won't do the transcription. Yeah, that. My problem was with playback. Yeah. There's also a, a, a thing called Fireflies, um, which you can invite to a Zoom meeting and it listens the entire time and just gives you a recap and a transcription of the whole thing as well. Well, we can figure that I'll out. We'll look into that. Next yeah. Time. Okay, I'm going to add that to my list. And so Fireflies. All right, we'll see if we can get right, a so free. free so want us to make a motion then to. Make motion to accept the minutes. All right. It's second is Doug. Any further discussion other than the grammatical stuff? Which... All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Unanimous. All right. Next item is Dina Stratton, our secretary, has resigned. And as of last week and yesterday, we got an email from Carolyn that she resigned. So we're down to members. Uh, well, so we'll need the village and the town to advertise for them. Carolyn, Adina went through the end of 25, and then Carolyn went through the end of 26. And we can confirm that with Tracy down too. But I'm, I just looked at it on the town website. And Dina was the village's appointment? Yeah. Well, Carol, Carol. Uh, yeah. Okay. So before we go any further, we'll need someone to step up and raise their hand to the secretary. I will do it like this transcribed way, but I might need, if for some reason we can't get this to work, I might I need help from the group depending on the week. But I think we can get this to work where I can do the transcription. Um. Okay. But I'm not going to take notes during the meeting. I really want to participate. I understand that. Okay. Yeah. So if that's good enough, I'm happy to do that. Well, I would say thanks for that. Um, but I would like to ask again um, for administrative support from the village. Um, we got administrative support for four years from the county, um, which was super helpful. 
having, having uh, trying to participate in meetings and act as a secretary is possible. Get the focus minutes. Define administrative support. Just someone coming to the meeting and taking minutes. I don't think it should be. And then also, if they were circulating the, uh, you know, doing the circulating the agenda, which we got already into. Yeah, well, that's no big deal. Okay. So really? it's really just the minutes is the heavy lift, right? I'll follow yeah, that. Yeah. Right? Okay. Michelle said that she had done it before, Trish. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's uh, what I'm saying. I don't, I don't think we'll get that. Well, it'd be amazing. All right, so, so yeah, you, I'm not but, needed. I'll be the backup, and I'll do it well, for next week. we still need a secretary. Yeah. By, by the bylaws. Right, George Which stepped really down. Which is really the official yeah. Huh? George stepped down. Yeah. Didn't want to go. Yeah. I don't think the secretary was, was very much, to be honest. Yeah, he was, he, in the yeah. absence of somebody right. writing minutes, he was doing the amendment stuff. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Or at a standstill until if somebody oh, if so you still want to be a secretary. I'll do it. <laughs> at least for a month or two. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I'll do it. If it if it if it becomes untenable for some reason, then we can discuss it again. Yeah. But hopefully we can get hopefully get another two members. Yeah, right. right. I think that's somebody might yeah. somebody might it's, okay. So we need a nomination. Some move. No, you can not on that. Yeah. I know, and I'm elated to be secretary ad hoc. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Second. Any further discussion? So thank you, Elaine. That have the yeah. have a vote. All those in favor? Unanimous. <laughs> All right. Um, well, trail stewards, you know that there's quite a few signed up, but since Carolyn resigned, I don't know exactly where we stand there. I would happily take over the trail stores. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Grace. Since there's so much fewer. So, so you know, just probably need to coordinate with either um Trace is probably involved, but then Jackie downstairs would get all I don't know. It's very much just approve them because I don't think the board has to approve them. They should find out. Yeah, I don't think anybody approved. Well, I thought the supervisor had to. There's some signature, like somebody else has to sign yeah, the some paper, I guess. Oh, the waiver? Yeah. 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 Trace, I'd offer what we can work together on. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Well, I'm going to lower the agenda for the I was also interested in doing a cleanup on the trail. Yes, I am. And so I wonder if she would. Want to be a steward? I'm not sure she knows about the program, so I mm -hmm. she feels so helpful with that. Okay. Well, Carol was trying to get a steward for the different sections of the, of the trail. I'll I try to meet up with her. She's she my neighbor. She's she has done. Yeah. So it's gotta, it's gotta do it. Okay. I'll see what she yeah. left off. And, yeah. yeah, I'm sure there's a list downstairs or a folder for yeah. everybody because mm -hmm. we got quite a few of us yeah. that are on in the room. Okay. Uh, any further discussion on the trail stairs? All right. We'll move on. Uh, real trail updates. Anyone, anyone want to start anywhere? I have one note that OSI added a counter um, to the Ellenville um, uh, entrance at the treatment plant. And that's going to be up for, there's no end date for that. And it just counts traffic. And um, and so they'll, they'll be excited to share the numbers over time with us. And um, they put it a few different spots. They put one at Inker Hansen at that trailhead. And um, that's just a little update. You should count to here, I don't think. Oh, no. A, 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 a <laughs> yeah, I got pedestrian it. traffic. I don't know if it counts dogs. It's a little higher up than my dog, but it's very low profile. Like you can't really see it as you do the class. And it doesn't take any photos or anything like that. It's just a movement. Yeah. Okay, so another thing that's happened is the Kerhoxon Trail. Uh, if you remember, uh, there was a couple with the location of the gazebos. So the gazebo or the kiosk was purchased for Kerhoxon. OSI, Annie Bergwin, the landscape architect, who's the project manager, has drawn up just a little uh, 
It's it's smaller than a pocket park, but it's like a landing spot for the uh, kiosk at the, the Thompson Trailhead, and also it straightens out the parking there a little bit because believe it or not, what's happened is downtown Thompson, you know, sometimes between the bar that's open, the restaurant, and the trail trail, that's become a hot spot, and so the park the parking is getting used. So they just put a proposal to the town. Um, they, they've done a construction drawings. They're proposing to have their contractor, the easel the lady get him to do it under his contract, but they're looking for the town to supply the materials, which is landscaping fabric and stone. And he's been talking to uh, <clears throat> the Terry about that. It's a nice little enhancement to that kind of thing. There's also there's also going to be um, an O and W a community engagement event for the O and W corridor study hosted by OSI on May first at the Village Town Hall. I don't know the timing of that, but at Village Hall. At Village Hall. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know what time though. Um, but that'll be great. I I think I'm out of town that day, but. She said there's also going to be a website uh, going live in April that'll have a survey that people can complete too if they're not able to go to the engagement event. And do we know what the is it, I know it's supposed to be for outreach. Is there anything that OSI is looking for from the community? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. No. From talking to them, I think actually they they see our community and the communities at the center of the Rondown Valley as kind of a model of how um, the community can quickly work with them to get a rail trail going. And they're, they're facing, they feel like they're facing more challenges down south of here in uh, Sullivan and Orange County, Sullivan County. So they want to um, just increase community engagement there as a model for you to further south of here. If they feel like they can successfully. That's my understanding. Well, but there any other discussions about the washout area? The part that washed out? Uh, yeah, they're um, OSI is talking to their engineer uh, about doing the engineering to provide plans, possibly for the town highway department. Mm -hmm. yeah. How close is the washout to the Port Bend area? Uh, it's really in the middle of the trail. Do okay. you know where they put the bridge? Uh, on the Ellenville right side. Got it. Yeah, a mile. What you say? Yeah, quarter of a mile away. Mm -hmm. Mile. Yeah. Away. It's a just south. It's and way it's closer. Off. You can't miss it. You can't. Yeah, it's yeah. closer to the sewer plant than yeah. the yeah. other direction. Any word later from the uh, proceeds from Run Like the Wind? I haven't heard back from them. Okay. So we had asked the Run Like the Wind crew if there would be up for. Donating some amount of their race um, registration fees toward uh, the sign that we've been talking about um, for vehicular and pedestrian um, uh, awareness and discovery of the trail on Canal Street and Edwards Place. Um, so I, I'll follow up with them again this week and just do a gentle nudge. Um, originally, you know, we had we were thinking, oh, maybe they could contribute to. The engineering the color, but it's too big. Whereas the sign is like what five hundred bucks we quoted. So I'll ask again. It would be it would be such a nice gesture since they're going to be using the rail trail for the race. So if anybody um has contacts and wants to sort of second that idea or or plants help help water that seed we planted, that would be great. Because I think the village is not in a position to fund that sign, but that sign would be amazing. Do you know if they give scholarships? No. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, they have scholarships they give. Yeah, they've given money for emergency responders, right? Well, it's right there, money you have over the yeah. 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Usually it's towards sports organizations. Oh, does anybody know if they've, uh, has the town or the village permit them for their proposed use of the rail trail yet? Town okayed it. We're just waiting for them to submit their surgical law insurance. Yeah. Most of it's on the town, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
We're also trying to encourage there's another race that day called Run Like the Breeze. It's a kid race. And we're trying to encourage them to stage it down there too. But I mean they'll probably they would probably all park at the ball field, which is what we're thinking. And they would, I mean it's not a long race, but it, it would what I, we felt it would draw people down to that area again and give them a realization of what's there. So I don't know that it's up to the nursery school they might race. And keep some off the now street. Yeah, that's that's our, our goal is really to move to, yeah, so we don't have to do traffic up here or anything like that. All right. So um village section grant project. So we have some turnover at um Harbor. Cloud Harbor. But luckily, the new sort of lead on the project has been really communicative. I don't know if you know me. I do. Okay. Um, it does seem like there is a new delay around uh, funding and the extension. They're on top of it, which is good, and communicating with us. And it's just going to be a matter of kind of like making way through the bureaucratic steps to get this detail sort of reinstated. It's the the layers of uh, reinstatement are deep, uh, but at least I think it's happening. We just have to wait. It does seem like the timeline is going to be pushed. Originally, Brian, who was our project manager at Bow Harbor, said gave me a rough timeline aiming toward July 2025. My guess is, you know, to manage our expectations, we're probably thinking about a year later. I'm just going to like to take that leap so that we're not disappointed. But I just, I have to do every three weeks to just check, check in and keep each step moving forward. And I think we will get there. Um, it's just going to be kind of a, it seems like it's a slog. So Elliot, are you the project manager? Because that should be somebody from the village or no, that's kind of in the next. Topic. I mean, Peggy has been actively on top of it uh, in terms of keeping the details straight on her end. But yeah, I think you do need to be it. But I don't know, does it transfer it? If there's a no, different yeah, village manager? It's all under the five pillars, but I'm just, and it could be, it doesn't have to be. It's typically somebody like the supervisor or the village manager, and there's typically somebody who actually pushes all the paperwork and uh, elected or appointed to spend it. When you say they tell somebody we have to the village has to, who, the village has to tell uh, the DOT okay. who they want to be the project manager because Mike I don't know if Mike Warren is still the project manager but he was. Yeah he was okay. uh, that's what I was telling who do you tell yeah, yeah you can do it that. you can do it through file or Okay. Right. I'll loop you in on my latest email exchange with them. Actually, you're on it, Elliot. Okay. It was back March 6th. Okay. But I, I can write a note just um, uh, reiterating, like restarting the thread. So let's move on then to the next, which is the the our, yeah. okay. of our project. And then we might as well start right with the project manager from the village on that, that one. So did you get an answer a little bit? Because that's going to have to be elegant too on that. Then. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Elliot and I have been trying to find time to kind of go through all these details. Um, the firm of Park Project? Yeah. yeah. Um, but I did send you that note last week that was sort of spelling out the RFPs we need. And I think that's it. Like and now it's starting to make be nervous making like we're gonna miss the spring and summer season mm -hmm. um for the courts. So I just think like I mean I detailed all of the the constraints and sort of the stuff I pulled everything from the grant approval into that email with the RFP details. And I think if nothing else, if we can just get that out so that we we satisfy the customary amount of time that the and is that for the resurfacing the fencing yep okay. yep and I can kind of like re is it helpful for you if I just send another note to re, to re yeah, to get that thread at the top again okay because what are we doing are they going to have an engineer look at that for the research some of the courts mm -hmm. 
Mike has, part of the... Mike has already spoken with an engineer about it and consulted. I mean, we were chatting about it recently and saying that we didn't feel like further engineering was needed. Okay. But I don't know if you want to speak to that anymore. Yeah, well, well, we'll speak to the engineer again. We might as well have them in there with them. The town's engineering, man? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that would be great. So, Hiring an engineer, I think, would put the project at risk oh, yeah. because we don't have the money. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, but but maybe, more. wait, just one note on that. I mean, if you wanted to speak to, to the town's engineer before the RFP goes out, then maybe that's a more timely, like in the next week or so. The town and the village engineer. Do we have a village engineer? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, then is this going to include Double the raising the surface and going in these bids that you talked about? That is on the list, right. yes. Um, and Mike, I think I can't remember if I put you on that email, but I'll I'll um, add you to the thread when I restart it for Elliot, just to make sure. Since we're talking about phone mode, uh, it's similar in spring now. Is there any uh, news in terms of the equipment that was going to be? Uh, Donated the last I heard they were the, the kids were picking out the ones that they thought would be good. So I connected with Mark a week or two ago and they had been looking at stuff. You, you know, we still don't have a sense of how large the donation might be. Um, but I went out and I measured all the gaps in the playground area and sent him the measurements with photos, chatted with Mike about the best spots. And Mark came back to me actually saying he was sort of disappointed because he felt like none of the spaces were large enough, which I thought like, okay. So then I was going to save this for new business, but it's just so exciting. I have to share it. Um, I met with Lisa Biles, the superintendent of schools, and I wanted to meet with her to just get some background information on the green space at Church and Warren Streets that the school owns. Um, does everybody know that space? It's, it's the, a, it's the elementary school. Yeah, the old little school building, and then it has the slope with trees. Nice. So Martin's kindergarten. Um, and Elliot's. Okay, so I just wanted to sort of gauge the school's interest in using that space um, as public space, and she was totally into it. So she says she thinks the board will be totally into it. She really liked the idea of having the character be potentially even a space where there could be more courts for basketball. But then she really liked this idea of a fitness circus circuit that could be used by older teenagers and older adults in the community. She's bringing it to the board of ed on um, April 2nd. She's going to discuss it with them. She thinks there's going to be a lot of support for it. And we talked about um, pretty easy ways to cordon off the building itself and maybe just create a space that's fenced off from that building so there's no issues with people accessing the building while it's shut down. Or She seems like totally open and up for it. So that's that the, was exciting. That's not the thing the school said that they have to pull the burning over away. No, 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 no. And I think if anything, what she really liked was thinking of the character of the space for older kids and adults. So courts maybe and um, the fitness circus equipment. So I'm gonna write to Mark, just kind of updating him. I wanted to update this group first, but I'm gonna let Mark know that that conversation went really well and that she seemed to think the board will be into it. And then maybe if he has bigger ambitions for equipment for that age group, then he would be open to doing the donation in that space. So that's the ideas. I thought you were gonna say it's all for theirs. No, you know, since it's a school space, yeah. I think it's really, their interest is in, you know, recreation for kids and the community. And so I think it would, it would be, a little inappropriate to make it. Um, I got yeah. you. It's so kind of fence I know. I, I think it actually would be great, but there's also some erosion questions that would make it not the best location for dogs. It's got a slope on that yeah. property yeah. too. It's yeah. Finding the spot for the court. The lower portion. Yeah, it's a more level. Yeah. Towards Warren Street. Oh so, yeah, I think there's. I think there's some. Plus it's a big. 
So I'll keep everybody updated on that. So, yeah. Yes, it was great. I was really excited. So then when we think on this project, when might we think the RFP will go out? So we'll work on some of what I have but that dates back with the one year. I mean, they even have kind of been in the hospital for anything. So, Jeff, that'd be great. The sooner the better. Yeah, I mean, we need to get it done this year, that entire project. So, yeah. that's the county deadline. But that's got to be complete by the end of this year. And so, I believe it was one of the year and a half after they mm -hmm. awarded it or something. It wasn't two years. And Peggy has done an excellent job keeping um, track of all receipts and invoices with one exception that we are still waiting from the town the town to give us the paid receipts to the playground equipment that was purchased through the town and um i haven't received an answer on that from terry but that's the one thing that she doesn't have that's record keeping for the town yep so on, on the playground, we do have the, the small pieces for the ages two to twelve. Yeah. Um, and Mike Cedar from the town of Federal Tire that can contain that and start that project and get those installed next week. Right. All the way into the week. Those, those fit like right in where the other stuff is. Yeah, where the existing mm -hmm. playground is now it's in that younger age. The little girl said. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, a little music. Just think about that. Has anybody yeah. encountered any of those things? Yeah, I have. So awesome. yeah, yeah. I went to one in Utica that was fantastic. It had uh, drums, um, chromatically tuned, like vibraphone, and all, like, totally vandal for you know, the scene. And the kids were, when I was there on Saturday, it was pretty impressive. The kids were all banging away on the The only item, last item there is the light poles. Where is that? Well, I think that needs to be sort of, ju they just need to be removed. Light poles. The the, light poles. Oh, yeah, we're going to remove the rest of the light poles. You're referring to around the basketball and yeah, yeah. yeah, they need to be taken down before they go to Is that going to be an RFP too, then? Is that fitting in the project? Oh, you're talking about installing or removing? Well, taking down those and then maybe replace them. Can, it happen in the can your team remove them? I can remove them. I think we, did, we cannot include it. I mean, we could include it in the RFP if we want quotes, but we are going to, to quickly point. be at risk of not being able to do the basic yeah, no, commitment. Nightlight is a nice amenity, but it's not critical. And there's no way we're going to be able to do the poles and lighting and all the courts improvements with the remaining monies. We need to find more money for the lighting. So I would do it separately. That's just so we do have a picture, so we have to get those poles in the line. Yes, and I think getting the poles out is yeah. kind of... I didn't hear, I can we we got to get the poles out, yeah, but we can I'll, do it. I'll remove them. Yeah. I'll remove the poles. You know, I think whatever that's in it, I need to go. Um, I would just ask if we can move forward and purchase some more um, engineering fibers, and, which is playing on both. So that we can dress up the things in our department and have a little bit more hand as we move forward. Do you have a dollar number on that one? Like, just so she has an idea. I would say you're looking at probably about a thousand dollars. Is there a budget? I mean, I don't want to ask about the budget for the village, but is there, I mean, playground mulch is a recurring yearly item. Do you have a budget line for that? I don't actually have a budget line. Um, I was actually referring to the money that exists and using it for right now yeah. against the, the project that's that in to finish up and then from there on out we'll do a, a budget line that actually you know. We're critical. It's not critical, it's just a cosmetic thing right now. We're just finishing up and as we finish up that section of the park to have that make it nice, make it nice. Not making any promises, but I can also ask at the town level too to see what kind of um, funding we have for the mulch. For the mulch. Yeah, they've got a litany of the playground there is mulched out, so there may be a there may be no more. I know we just approved more for litany, so it's kind of a good time. 
So bring the possibility back to the NC cap. All right, anything further on the burn road flood? Uh, we'll just quick, nothing new, anything new on the survey. Yeah. I mean, at this point, we have to start the whole process over. The quotes were gotten, got the quotes in June of 2023. Uh, so they have to all be redone. So I would have to repackage everything. So asking the group, is it worth going back out to the surveyors to get quotes updated and sending it back to the town? So I asked around about it. And he, the question that was asked to me is, is there ongoing complaints from those property owners or is this proactive to avoid Proactive to avoid maintaining trails on neighboring properties Got it. and know where, so we're not putting town money into resources like we just did the pickleball course that are close to the property line there and some other things like that. So I guess making sure that we're actually making or putting facilities on the park when they're not on private yeah. property. And vice versa too. So. Yeah. And, um, and I, I don't know if I wrote it down and looking back at my notes, did we, was there a estimated cost to the that you had? Yeah, I got three quotes. Okay. That I shared with Terry on July nineteenth for twenty. July nineteenth. Look at here. Okay. Okay. Um, let's move on to the dog part. Okay. Um. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. So I have I have an update to our presentation and um, oh I have to join the meeting and also uh, an ask for a new vote. So this is exciting and some new pictures of dogs in the presentation. Mm -hmm. So if anybody, your dog, my dog is making an appearance. <laughs> my parents' dog is going to be in there. So we've got some. I, my goal is to include new dog pictures every time I present. Sorry, this will just take a second because I got to join the Zoom. Wonder if I need to let myself in. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, George is pretty busy. Mm -hmm. If he does try and join in. Okay. Okay. okay, so now I'm going to share my screen and okay, here we go. Everybody should be able to see it. Okay, so um, does this work? Okay, so this shouldn't be, um, oh my gosh, we cannot cover up the dog pictures. <laughs> I was wondering if that was a fire dog. Uh, there's so many good lights on. Okay, so um, some of you have seen this, our guests have not, um, but this is kind of an expansion of the presentation I did when we originally voted to officially adopt this as an initiative of the commission. So just to do a quick, um, you know, recap is like, why do we want the dog park? There's some, there's a lot of amazing benefits we get. And, and there's also a lot of data out there showing that it's supporting these uh, aspects of it, but better health and well-being. This is not just for dogs, but it's also for the humans of our community who either own dogs or love being around dogs or if anybody has watched jo dogs play joyfully, they know that it will make your heart soar. Um, it's also a dog park is a great place for people to meet and bond. Um, there are amazing statistics out there about increased property value in the areas immediately adjacent to dog parks. So I think that's an economic boon for um, wherever we, you know, wherever we are able to establish this. And also with dog parks, you know, you do have an economic impact of people coming from surrounding communities or while passing through, stopping, visiting the dog park, and then visiting, maybe having lunch, going to a coffee shop, this kind of activity. And the other thing that I wanted to highlight is, um, you know, a dog park can be a solution to a lot of different things. Um, it can help socialize dogs, so they're better 
behaved overall. It can also be a place where dog owners can help educate each other about dog behavior and dog training. And it can also be a way to utilize public space that might be underutilized. Um, and therefore detracting any kind of like squatting or drug use or things that can happen in public space that isn't populated. Okay, so why now? Um, we do know that community engagement is high. We've got really great programming. It feels like um, layering on a new exciting space um, to highlight and bring people into is gonna be very of, uh, of the moment. And I also um, you know, see this real opportunity to move beyond basics is what I'm calling it, where we can start thinking sort of like that green space with the school. It's like thinking about our green spaces with different characters for different uses and really starting to have like a profile of parks that satisfy a lot of different segments of our community and different needs. This is just a smattering of how other communities promote themselves through promoting the dog park, which I think would be really, really great for Ellenville and Woolworthing. And then of course there's questions about liability and risks. That is my dog in the upper right-hand corner with Mayor Trent and dog at LT. They are best friends. <laughs> um, this is a solved problem. There's a lot of, you know, dog municipal dog parks exist all over New York State and the United States. And um, this slide is basically to show that they're doing due diligence, doing it properly, making sure the village and town aren't liable. These are these are solved problems that will be, um, you know, not complex to solve and will be addressed. Yeah, there's precedent and a roadmap on exactly how to do it. Exactly. Somebody actually gave me the, the sign on the left, someone gave that to me as a gift and I have it at my house, which is <laughs> in my backyard. Okay, so then thinking about like what makes for a great dog park. Um, I did a bunch of research on best practices around, around the state mostly, but also further um, around the country. Um, so, so these are kind of like agreed upon attributes that make for a great space. You want a convenient location and you want it to be close to where people live and do um, you know, business, but you don't want it to actually immediately border people's private homes. The more space, the better. Dogs, um, you know, they interact really well, but they also do need their space. So confining to a small space is not ideal, but having as much space as possible is great. There's also um, a lot of preference for a combination of shaded area and open fields. Anybody who's been to a dog park without any shade knows that it can be a little bit brutal for the humans and the dogs can get hot too. Um, also drainage and established ground cover is really important. Proximity to public parking is also a big thing and beautiful surroundings. You know, it's a, we want it to be a space people want to be in with their dogs. I've been to some pretty dire dog parks and I, they don't have me hanging around very long. Um, okay, so then in infrastructure. Here, I'm not gonna read through all these, but basically what I've done in my research is bumped out sort of the minimum requirements of launching a dog park, which I'm calling a V1, and then nice to haves, which would be a V2. Um, and I think that that small dogs area, the reason I have it at the very top is that I would love for that to be in a first round launch, but this will depend on funding. It's just a question of money. And I checked with a few people who have started dog parks around the country, contacts that I have. And oftentimes people launch without the separate area and then add it quickly um, because additional fundraising is usually a bit easier once a park actually exists. Okay, here's where we are in the process. This is like one of my favorite photos. Um, so we, you know, in the later part of last year, we passed a motion to adopt this as an official initiative. Um, I've been spending the last months researching and evaluating possible locations in our community. And the Coalition of Forward Facing Ellenville has officially agreed to fundraise for the project. So that's sort of where we are. 
Um, next steps today, I'm going to be asking, I'm going to be showing some of my research and evaluation on locations. And then ideally, we're hoping to present a findings and a recommendation if the commission approves it to the town, maybe on April 4th, we make the uh, deadline for getting into the, the, onto the agenda. Okay, so here are the four locations. Oh, whoops, I entered a calculation on the last one. Um, anyway, here are the four locations that we that we've explored: Burn Road Park, Bob Mangles Municipal Park, Camper Park, and Mill Street Park. I ran into a few deal breakers in in researching three of the four locations. While Burn Road Park has a lot of parking, a lot of space, one thing that I discovered in talking to people who've established dog parks is that. Um, one of the biggest things is that that people said to me was, if you can put it in a totally separate location from a playground, you should. That the intersection and interactions of kids and dogs is not always the best thing. And so setting the community up for that overlap can be tricky. It's not like, you know, terrible, but it was I, I it wasn't something I had considered. And a few people said that to me. That's probably the case with Lemon Park. Interesting. That's it. Living's the same example. Yeah. Over the years, they wanted it at Living Park, but that's the problem behind it. It's yeah. Like, literally, people were just fit the same way that they were you know, oriented. They kind of weren't even talking about it. Mm -hmm. We had pictures of people who didn't fit. Gruesome. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, hence the deal breaker. Um, Camper Park, which is a beautiful park that I'm excited for us to talk about at some point on the commission. Um, you know, it's not really walkable or bikeable from a more populated area. It is in need of some major bridge repairs. Um, it feels like the character of that park could be a fishing character, which I know is also the history of it to some degree. And there's also a playground there. And then Mill Street Park, which is the small green space um, off of Center Street in the village, there you have no designated parking and there is a private home immediately adjacent to the space. So doesn't really satisfy those best practices. Then we get to Bob Mangles Park. Um, I have two slides on the attributes and conditions that I've sort of discovered and, and looked closely at here. We do have a convenient location that's close to the residential and commercial areas, but there the perimeter of this park does not border any private homes. And that's a big deal. Um, there's even, you know, it's at, if, if folks don't know, I should have included a little map, but this is, um, does anybody not know where this park is? Okay, so I don't have to describe it. Um, right, so across the street, that's the other thing that's really great. It's even though it's in a residential community, you have a buffer where across Webster Street is the rescue squad building that kind of buffers it from the rest of um, that little neighborhood. There's also tons of space, as Terry informed me, it used to be a softball field and a baseball field. Oh, field. Yeah. And, and the elephant yeah. burial ground it has the animal spirit in there. I think that, that would be, um, we'll have to do a shrine to the elephant. I think we'll raise some money for that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long story, but a circus elephant apparently met its untimely <laughs> In Ellenville. I was in Elliot's uh, beach. Well, you know, were you there, there when the elephant so, so was there? The, 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 the legend is that the elephant was used to put up the poles in the circus tent, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the Trump, and that one of the poles hit an electric oh. wire oh. and then the metal pole, and the elephant was electrocuted and they buried it on site. That's, that's the legend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can, you know, do some sort of homage to the elephant spirit. Um, the other thing that's really unique about this space is that there are shaded areas and open fields. I've also been frequenting this park um, regularly for the last year and a half and paying close attention to the drainage and ground cover, and it's pretty incredible. We don't have any puddling in this park, which is a big deal when you're talking about dog parks. You know, a little puddle can become a huge mud pit very quickly. Um, and the ground cover is very well established and um, also great upkeep on part of the town. Um, there is proximity to public parking. There's, um, you know, the street on Webster just outside the park across the street from the fire rescue squad. 
I measured it and it has space for about nine parking spots, not including the legal space for that fire hydrant. And then there are, it's sort of like an indetermined parking area over in the corner, but there's a little space there where people the elephants. Oh, that's where the elephants. What? Is this on the Washington Avenue or on the wood side? The parking space. Oh, the parking space is on the DeWitt side by the pile of rocks. Yeah, people park over there. It's like a flood, it's like a flood plain area. It, it's, it's just like people, one or two cars go over there, but you do have about seven to nine legal spots on Webster adjacent to the park before the fire hydrant. Um, and then, wait, how could I skip it? I mean, look at the photo. Yeah. Anybody who has stood in this park knows that this is one of the most gorgeous views we have in the town of Warsing and Ellenville. Um, the surroundings are just incredible. We also, the park is very well maintained. Most of the space is already fenced in. Um, and what I've uh, come to understand from frequenting this park lot with my dog Seeger is that local residents primarily use this for dog walking as it is. Now, there are two problems that I think we can sort of tangential problems we can solve by converting this space to a dog park, which I'm actually really excited about. There, I have talked to residents in the neighborhood who say the main complaint about the park is that there are occasional squatters and there's some drug use in this park. Um, I think the best way to mitigate that is by making this a designated dog park and bringing more people to it and having it be used in a real kind of active way. Um, and also to inject some attention for the park, which, you know, um, is a deterrent for folks who are maybe up to no good. There's also complaints locally about dog owners not picking up dog poops. I pick up a lot of other dog poop that's not produced by my dog in this park. And I think that also can be a problem that we solve as part of the dog park, we will, we would install um, those stations with bags and little bins and um, that would be something that we need when we ask the town, you know, for support with this, it's part of what we will ask for. Um, so right now, regular maintenance item. Yes. And right now the town is um, maintaining the lawn and some tree upkeep, but there's no trash removal. So, you know, that is something we could decide, listen, if we don't have to support that, it's not a must have, it's a, it's a nice to have. Mm -hmm. But it would be, um, at the very least, you could put up the bag stations if we didn't want the trash removal and encourage people to carry out and have, similar to Minnewaska, have signs about this is a carry out facility, please take the waste with you. That's just in my experience, the one thing that people will not carry out is their dog poop bags. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, they, uh, they usually tie them onto trees or leave yeah. them in the park. Yeah. 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 I think if we can get the trash removal piece, it would be big. Yeah. It'll be big. There's a donor for the group stations, right? For the veterinarian. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The Rondell Valley vet. Yeah. 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 Brian, Brian said he would do that too a while ago. Yeah. 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 Um, so, there's also a lot of like social pressure at dog parks. Like when other people are picking yeah. up dog poop, Mike Jetter sees me in our neighborhood a lot, waving around my poop bags as I walk with Seeger, just to inspire others to do the thing. Okay. <laughs> so um, now is the time. I would love to ask the commission um, to support a motion to recommend to the town of Warsing that a municipal dog park be established at the site of the current Bob Mangles Botanic Garden with funds to be raised to support the project by the Coalition of Forward Facing Ellenville. I also played around with what feels like a very fun name for the dog park, uh, just for some fun that it could be the Warsing Webster Street Dog Park, for example. Um, just, just some fun ideas. It sort of rolls off the tongue, I thought. What an open book. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a morbid undertone there, but. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, we can discuss if there's questions or concerns, but I think we are at the point where I'd love for the commission to support this motion. So all the funding will come from the property, right? It won't be any town or village. That's the goal, yeah. Okay, just because I know yep. I can just foresee 
the online chatter about, oh, we don't have any money. Yeah. The other part isn't done. And so yeah. I just want to make sure we get ahead of that. Yep. I think that the goal, the whole goal of this project is that this would be sort of a private public partnership and that coffee would basically maintain a crew of volunteers that would also head up further improvements and support the town and maintenance of the park, which is actually a very, very common approach with that municipalities take. Um, mm -hmm. Oftentimes dog parks are either completely hosted by a private individual on public space or with some sort of partnership. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you think, uh, since it's in a small neighborhood and it's a little it's somewhat with the change in use in the property, mm -hmm. that uh, community engagement should happen before this proposal goes to the town board or after the town board? I was going to say that part of my ask at the town board was if the town wanted to, you know, schedule a vote at a future meeting and do a public hearing as part of that meeting where I could also make this presentation and be available for questions and discussion and, and members of the community could come out and comment um, and be part of that public hearing. I think, you know, I'm all for the open process and I know you've been walking around there and talking to the people that live there. What's the, what do you pick up from that? So um, the main conversations that I have have been with people who live there, walking their dogs in this park, yeah. who really love using the park with their dogs. Against the rules, but. Yeah. yeah. Um, but literally, I've never seen a person in the park without a dog, which I mean, is funny. I engage the, the first aid squad folks and the nursery school folks who mm -hmm. both are very mm -hmm. close to the park. Yep. The nursery school, the kids do not leave the, the, the facility and the property. So uh, we don't have a school. It's on Washington Ave. And I checked into that just to make sure there was no conflict or there would be kids moving near or in the park and they don't use the park. Um, but yes, I, I my conversations with people, the aspects of them that have been a little disappointing is a little bit of a, mm -hmm. yeah, a little bit of a, I love this. I love using it this way. I'm happy talking to you, Elena, but I don't want other people coming. And while I understand the 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 sort of protective nature where that comes from, I think that's how we don't manage, you know, we that's not how we manage public space. That said, I mean, for me, two of the biggest things that have come up in my conversations with people in the community are their complaints about the poop and the squatters. And I think that the dog park is actually the best solution for both of those issues. And so what I'm hoping also is that that'll be a big win that can mitigate concerns. I, I mean, I also think, do I think we're gonna have a hundred people going to this park on a Saturday? I wish, you know, that would be a nice problem to have, but I I don't see that exactly happening. But the eight, eight or nine cars in a legal parking space is, mm -hmm. is uh, is actually a, a limiting factor, and um, if it did get popular and people started bumping out into the neighborhood, mm -hmm. there could be, you know, feedback. The problem. Yeah, I think that would be a, you know, in my mind, a good problem to have. But I think, you know, the way that I imagine it in my visions would be like, wouldn't it be incredible to if it was so popular and and there was so much attention to it that we could somehow connect it. To the rail trail mm -hmm. via a pedestrian bridge over the creek well, that and get connect, funding that will connect the shopping center it would connect the, the old folks. all of it and yeah. so i think as a someday that is the that's like the dream um it would be great over that right <laughs> one four properties down there i i think the biggest pushback you're probably going to get uh, from the first aid squad folks worried about jamming up that area when they are responding to a call and you know the concern about the par parking so that's something that if we address it mm -hmm. prior to rolling it out mm -hmm. maybe something how do their vehicles exit that building because they have that community. i think they it's on the other side yeah they, well they have a couple of different bays on, yeah. on all sides um I, I they thought they would come out into their car. No, no, they don't have a they, bay that's, in Webster. I think that's where they come in and they may throw their cars in the, in the lot there, you yeah. know, to access the building on the Webster side. Park their own personal cars. Uh, I've um, only seen cars in their lot. And um but they, but I'm looking at it and that you can cultivate that space to the north of mm -hmm. the park as 
there's one. probably four spots Easily. over there. Easily, so. The other thing to know is that most people stay at a dog park for about 25 minutes. So even if it's very popular, the turnover is actually much quicker than a lot of public space. The one thing we haven't talked about is that the town has been under pressure for a long time now to establish a dog park. And this commission is recognizing that and trying to come up with a solution. Yeah. Prior to that. So the issue hasn't gone away. Right. And 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 I think that that the, the proposal that you have up there, I think is the answer to it. Um I think it needs a lot of uh so I would be happy to, to, to make the motion for what you have here to recommend to the town board that a municipal dog park be established at Bob Bangle Botanic Garden site. Can I ask one more question? Mm -hmm. um, so I know, and, and Ed may be able to speak to this a little better, I know that um, the reason that park drains so well is because it's all part of a federal floodway. Mm -hmm. And um, I've seen um, I've seen some mapping showing um, like easements for the, for the floodlands there. It is flood control. Right. Yeah. 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 Is, is, the, is the park like exempted from that or outside? I would say no. I would say no. In my opinion, I would say no. We do a spring and fall inspection every year with uh, DEC and our Corps engineers. Yeah. And then um, we do cite it. They do, uh, it's not cited, but they do visit it. Yep, and see how the drainage is being done. The park itself, yep. the Pennsylvania the area, from the which is burned with pine kiln, which is burned very right. 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 So right. Right. that was part of the project. I mean, I don't see that being a big problem because the use, you're not really changing anything in the use in right. regards to a floodway, but I just, uh, just yeah. adding a fence probably, right? Yeah, that's it. No yeah. buildings or right. maybe, maybe yeah. some, eventually some. Yeah. You're not changing the mowing cycles no. or drainage or anything, so it's probably not a big deal. Yeah, just so thinking I, about it. With that, I just still wanted, I still want to understand where was the parking going to be. I feel that it was on no. Webster, as my understanding. On Webster Street, there's pu pu public curbside parking from DeWitt to down Webster toward Washington before the fire hydrant. Just public on street parking. And then, and I don't think we're going to create any designated parking for the first wave of it because there's the space there for, depending on the size of the car, seven to nine vehicles. But then on the north side at DeWitt, at the corner there, currently people park over there. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's not a clear parking space, but there's gravel and it's at the end of the street. And that to me actually, that's where I would want to check with DEC actually, because that's an access point to the flood plains. And so I'm I'm staying away from all of that and just keeping the I, the scope on on the park side. The short part way it ends with the fence and yeah, yeah. The that's where I always park on yeah. the yeah. So the main are you not actual park? I know that's why I'm not Post suggesting that that park is no park. I'm just thinking I'm just identifying the legal on street parking that currently exists. Is this angle parking or parallel? No, it's parking? parallel parking. Yeah, it's a parallel. Yeah. Is, is that area like where the road ends and the and it hits, goes right to the park? Is that posted? No parking? It's not I I don't parking. think there's a sign, it's but it, I've never felt like it was a official. But this is where people park. So if if we wanted no parking there, we'd build in maybe a sign to just to reiterate that. So I, I think like having some kind of a site plan before we go to the town makes some sense um, because the, these parking things still they can quickly. I can mock that up. I, I'll mock that up. That's a great no. Well, that's no problem. Front of the planning board then too. No, no. I, I think. Do you just mean like I can mock up a site plan to just show the vision and the space use and where things? No, I understand yeah. that, but we'll look things go. But the planning, the what would the planning board, there's no park. change in use for the parking. I don't think that would no, we would be a park. Well, I'm assuming and it's already a municipal park. I would assume that they mine it for mm -hmm. parking spaces or just ad hoc, mm -hmm. just for I think we don't, yeah. It's just it's just I'm just asking. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think. There's no obstacle to jump. Right. I, I it think may, it may make sense to just uh, 
to do that further on in the process and get this asked now. Maybe, I don't know. I'm not sure. Say, I think we don't, unless the town would require it, like there's plenty of other places in the village where parking is not painted, that where public. This is, legal, a lot like, this is a lot like Mill Street, right? Like the, exactly. the parking for Mill Street is just on the public. It's just on the public street. Yeah. So I think. Yeah. Which I is fine. I mean, parking on Mill Street. I think the way I think right now it's it's legal public on street parking that has a lot of precedent throughout the village, and it's not like from the conversations I'm having with people, a dog park is not an issue where you have tons of bottleneck parking situations for hours on end. Again, just the twenty minute turnover. Just to understand this: the park is on town land. Yes. But the, yes. Yeah, the neighborhood is all village property, so the town owned, right? Mm -hmm. yes. the so, the, so the town, the line just kind of cuts right through there or right at the park. Is the yeah, town just village the, the, the mowing line, the curb line, the botanical gardens is the town. Yeah. The village owns the road. All the houses are on village property. Yes. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. All right, well, we need to move along. Yeah, yeah. let's get going. All right, so, so we're in motion. Does somebody want to second it? I second. Second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor to the unanimous. All right, quickly. Any old business overlooked that might? Only that I would say one, I got to finish the drainage over a little part outside of that. I know there's a lot of going on and everything's being done beautiful. I would say this about Virgo Park with coordinating with Ellen and hopefully we get at the end of the lane. I would say as the committees all get together and kind of work get, and get Burnham Park done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Know, I have a lot of stuff as a supervisor putting me telling to do outside of Burnham Park. I know we have this work that needs to be fulfilled, but I would say let's just yeah. work together. Let's all try to get Burnham Park done and finished so that we can move forward. Yeah. I'm willing to help with anything and everything else. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. So right, I think it's or? like me with the engineer, then he does the RFP. I think those are the next two steps. I'll go to the Delaware. Okay. Engineer that through the village, Delaware is more talk to the town. Okay. Any other old business over there? Any new business? If you want to, so I hiked up to where they paint the rock. Uh, a few weeks ago, and there is so much trash up there. Gross. It's crazy. I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'll pick up this bucket. And I was like, oh my God, there's 5,000 buckets up here. Really? So I do think we should maybe think about potentially trying to organize cleanup. It's really bad. Not that anyone. about the mountain. Uh, yeah, where they paint every year. Um, senior class. Yeah. They, they, yeah. Don't, they don't remove it. They literally. I gave the school every right and the, and the students to bring all the trash down, put it at the pavilion on the top of the okay. hall, and let us know when we remove cool. it. That's what we can do. Okay, because I was going to just organize people, but I was like, well, I don't know how to even get, like, I guess I could just put it in my trash can. But um, well, you can just bring it down, okay. bring it to the street department, and coordinate with me, and then we we'll fall. We could do that with the stewards. Yeah. I, want to I was remiss, but we left it up there. In the big team. Yeah. No, you, you are. In fact, I should have introduced, you know, we had to introduce yourself at the beginning, and here we are at the end. Oh, I am. Why don't you make the kids who put it there? I would try to, if, I'm going to organize cleanup and I would like to try to engage the kids to help okay. bring something. There's only some signs that they long. brought it in, you take it out. Uh, the school should be supposed, supposed to do that. That's it's, supposed to be Yeah, the school kids. should be like, do your thing, it's cool. Yeah, fine. It's, highly, it's, cool. Cool. it's not really like a yeah, sanctioned like school like at the end. Yeah. It's not but a it sanctioned school. It's not a sanctioned school. Okay, anything else? Otherwise, take care of your turn and see you April 18th here. Yeah. I'm excited for this dog park. Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't even have that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.